Behind the breathtaking architecture and sparkling lifestyle, there lie hidden secrets that this city doesn't want you to know. For more than a century, Dubai has proudly maintained its tax-free status and has attracted billions of dollars from 85% of its foreign population, even providing money laundering services to Russian billionaires. But now, everything has changed. Since June 2023, social media has been going viral on Dubai charging 9% corporate tax from businesses. But what if I tell you that Dubai has already been charging an endless number of taxes for decades? What if I tell you that this entire transformation of this city from being a fishing village to its police driving supercars was done by the taxes paid by tourists and the businessmen it attracted? I know it sounds weird because everyone thinks that the majority of Dubai's revenue comes from oil. Well, check this out. In 2018, oil contributed less than 1% to Dubai's GDP. So how does Dubai make its money? And how did it secretly become one of the world's fastest growing economies? This is the dark side of Dubai's tax haven status. It was the year 1822. A British naval destroyer arrived at the coast of Dubai. Yes, the same British government that has the habit of storming every border in history. Anyways, so when the British arrived at the coast, they were astonished to notice an oval-shaped town surrounded by a mud wall. And when they entered inside, they found around 800 members of this Bani Yas tribe. Of course, with goats and camels around too. Now, the reason why the British arrived at this coast was they were looking for a pirate tribe called Kawasim, who were accused of piracy and plunder by the British. But the sheiks of Dubai were peaceful and happy with their fishing culture, which eventually resulted in the signing of a peaceful treaty between the two for better future relations. However, a few decades later, a deadly smallpox epidemic struck the Burr Dubai region, which forced people to relocate to the Dira district. The situation became worse when, in 1896, an enormous fire broke out in the city, which consumed 50% of the entire Burr Dubai region. Why am I telling you this? Because it was all these actions that forced Maktoum bin Hasha, I think telling you his full name would take the entire length of this video, it was all these actions that forced Bin Hasha, the then ruler of Dubai, to open his mind and think of Dubai as much bigger than a fishing village. And that is when he introduced the concept of free tax. He said, let's make Dubai a free port of the world, a place where no tax will be charged on imports or exports. Surprisingly, this strategy worked. Within the next decade, Dubai was trading 70,000 tons of cargo attracting investors from Bombay and the rest of the world. But in that tax-free scheme, people failed to notice the ultimate plan of Dubai, a secret plan that transformed Dubai from this to this. And that plan was to hide tax rates under the table. So imagine you, as an investor, land in Dubai and you have a bag full of cash. As you are looking for business opportunities, you finally decide to invest in its massive oil and gas market. The city has around 4 billion barrels of oil reserves and produces around 2.9 million barrels per day. Seems like a great investment, right? And the best part is, you don't have to pay any tax because it's a tax-free country. Well, here's the catch. For businesses investing in the oil and gas market of Dubai, they will have to pay not 5% or 15%, but 55% tax from their revenue. Yes, 55%. This is why public companies like Emirates National Oil Company, Dubai Petroleum, and Emirates General Petroleum Corporation rule the oil market because they are established and governed by the Dubai market. Now, Dubai's crude oil has some unique sides to it. It is one of the few Persian Gulf crude oils that is available immediately. While in the majority of the oil-producing countries, it takes around two to four weeks for well drilling. Moreover, Dubai is part of OPEC, a union of 13 Middle East countries like Kuwait and Iran that produces 30% of global oil production and has 80% of the world's proven oil reserves. A perfect opportunity to make use of this oil monopoly and divert the money into the development of Dubai. Surprisingly, that is what they did. In 2022, 
the average OPEC oil price was around 100.08 US dollars per barrel. And in the year before that, in 2021, the price per barrel was around 69.89 US dollars. But this is not the first time they used their monopoly to play with the prices. During the 2008 financial crisis, the majority of the OPEC members voted to reduce the production of oil to increase prices. The price immediately reached 100 US dollars per barrel, and after a few months, it went down to 30 US dollars per barrel. Now, Dubai was very well aware that one day it would run out of its oil reserves. Specifically speaking, at present, it is believed that in the next 20 years, this blistering city will completely run out of oil. This warning was also issued by 20th century Dubai sheikh Rashid bin Said. He said, My grandfather rode a camel. My father rode a camel. I drive a Mercedes. My son drives a Land Rover. His son will drive a Land Rover, but his son will ride a camel. Thus, the need to diversify their economy was put on the table. Moreover, dependence on oil was never part of their strategy, because before discovering oil on their land in 1966, Dubai's free tax scheme had always been successful. But this time, they wanted to secretly lay their hands in every industry. In 2022, more than 14 million people visited Dubai, and with its average 40 degree temperature, they are bound to get thirsty for a sweet and highly attractive fizzy drink. I mean, we can always drink water, right? But when you are in one of the most attractive cities in the world, you do feel the need to try out new things. And this is where Dubai's secret tax is waiting for you. You see, Dubai levies a 50% excise tax on fizzy drinks, a tax that is imposed on the goods purchased within a country. So, every time you buy a bubbly drink from any store in Dubai, you are paying 50% more than its actual price. As 50% tax is also imposed on any sugary product you buy. The tax haven tag becomes more disturbing when people decide to purchase energy drinks or tobacco products to finally breathe some fresh air. Because in these types of products, the excise tax is not 50 or 60, but 100%. Yes, 100%. This, in turn, has skyrocketed the profit of beverage and tobacco manufacturing companies in Dubai. For example, Alokoze's revenue in 2022 was $9.6 billion, Dubai Refreshments $182 million, and United Foods UAE $210 million. In 2019, Mastercard's Global Destination Cities Index discovered that tourists in Dubai spend more than any other country in the world. A year before that, tourists spent $30.82 billion, and the average spend on an individual per day is around $553. No wonder why Sheikh Rashid Al Maktoum keeps smiling these days. His smile gets bigger when tourists are secretly charged a 10% tax on restaurants, hotels, and resorts that you visit on your trip. And not 10% tax in all of them together, it is charged in each of these facilities. That is a 10% tax on the room rate, a 10% service charge on your favorite restaurant, a 10% municipality fee, and a 6% tourism fee. The best part? This revenue does not go into the pocket of hotel staff. It is sent directly to the government's wallet. So, we've covered the beverage industry, tourism industry, oil industry, and shattered the myth of Dubai being a tax haven. But there is one more industry that we need to cover, which is the banking industry. In short, the Dubai government charges a flat 20% corporate tax on the income of all foreign banks established in their city. For example, HSBC, Standard Chartered Bank, Citibank NA, Royal Bank of Canada, and of course, Credit Suisse AG. So, would you call Dubai a tax-free city? Let me know your thoughts and, as always, thanks for watching.